What a time to be alive! 144 hertz, 32 inch 1080p monitor. Why on earth would I be interested in a 32 inch 1080p monitor? The pixels have got to be the size of bricks. This is crazy. What's wrong with me? This doesn't make any sense. This is a PVA panel. It's not a TN panel. So I think that's a little bit interesting. But we're going to need a lab coat to take a look for this monitor review. Not only that, this is probably going to be about 30% monitor review and about 70% how to actually look for things and test for things and do some stuff on your own to see what kind of situation your monitor is in. Because when you look at the monitor specs and it says one millisecond gray to gray, what does that mean? Hint, nothing. It's lies. It's all lies. It's all terrible. So we're going to take a look at the M320 CLZ, but because this review is so unusual, and because if you look at the specs for this monitor on paper, you're going to say 32 inches, 1080p, 144 hertz, not a TN panel, costs more than a, three, a TN panel. What, what, what's going on? But let me get my lab coat. Uh, you know, what's happening? Is he on too many M&Ms? Not enough M&Ms? You know, what's the problem? Well, the easiest way for me to explain it is by way of comparison. I've got this. This is a Samsung U28D590D. This monitor from Samsung is awful. It's a 4K monitor. It is just unbelievably bad. It is astonishingly bad. I can't believe that they actually released this product. Everything about this monitor I don't like, and I think that it's misleading in terms of its specifications. If you look at its specifications, one millisecond gray to gray, and you know, good color accuracy. We're gonna look at a Tom's Hardware article, not to pick on Tom's Hardware. I think Tom's Hardware generally does a pretty good job. But we're gonna take a look at a Tom's Hardware review of this monitor. Now, I did a review of this monitor, but in that review, the summary was, uh, it stinks. It stinks. It stinks. And referring to the monitor. I stand by that. Uh, the Tom's Hardware review came out a little after I'd finished mine, so we're talking about well over a year ago at this point. But by way of comparison, this is really good. It's a TN panel. It advertises as one millisecond gray to gray. Uh, yes, this is not a 144 hertz panel the way that this one is. This is a PVA panel in our microboard monitor. Uh, the PVA is... Of course, somewhere in between TN and IPS. So if you have IPS and PLS in terms of color accuracy and the kinds of things that you want, you know, for not gaming necessarily, but day-to-day -day product productivity. And then TN at the lower end uh, in terms of like fast response and, and that sort of thing, but not so good on the color accuracy. Then PVA is somewhere in the middle. PVA in this case meaning vertical alignment, not uh, AHVA, Advanced Hyper Viewing Angle, which is an IPS type technology. There's actually a lot of offshoots between TN and PVA and, and IPS. And, you know, there's PLS and it's just depending on who owns the patents and uh, what parent company had the technology and who got in bed with whom to produce some monitor in a joint venture. But this is Samsung, you know, multi-billion dollar multinational company. Crazy, you know, just super awesome. Discount Korean monitor from eBay. I think it's going to be a fun and interesting comparison. Let's take a look. All right, now, so first to get started, what's the situation with this micro board monitor? It comes with this attractive chrome base, but it is a uh, Visa mount on the back if you want to do that. However, it's recessed. So the Visa mount in this case is 75 millimeters, but because it's recessed, it's not going to be compatible with all Visa mounts. So you'll want to double check that your 75 millimeter Visa mount doesn't have any things sticking out or anything like that, because it is a little bit of a tight fit. The kit comes with all the screws that you'll need for mounting, whether you want to go with Visa or, you know, to assemble the stand. Also included in the box is a power adapter, power cable, and your DVI cable. Now, somebody pointed out that when you use this type of adapter, um, you don't get an earth ground. There's no earth ground that makes it through this adapter to the monitor. But this is a standard power cord, so this is the same exact kind of power cord that computers have used since the 1980s. So you can just substitute the whole cord if you happen to have another piece of equipment laying around that uses this type of cord. Earth to monitor, earth to monitor, come in please. Yeah, there's no earth ground, so what are you going to do? It is also a curved display in case that wasn't readily apparent because of the lens aberration or poor lighting or whatever that I might happen to be doing wrong today. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. The bezel is sort of a two-part. There's sort of an exposed bezel and then there's a little bit of a bezel under the panel. There is sort of a curved matte finish piece of plastic 
on the front of this. Uh, so the bezel is a little bit wider than it would appear, but it's still a very, very small bezel overall for this particular display. Honestly, the biggest complaint that I have about this monitor is that it's 32 inches, but only 1080p. That's a very low pixel density. That's, that's pixel densities from like CRTs in the late 90s. Um, it's really not good that the pixel density is that low, but the claim to fame of this monitor is that it's 144 hertz. And to my surprise, out of the box with no overclocking at all, the monitor reports in its EDID that it is 144 hertz. So plugging it in, your operating system should detect it as 144 hertz. In addition to 144 hertz, it also supports 120 hertz, so you can run it lower with that. The monitor also supports FreeSync, although you'll have to enable FreeSync through the on-screen menus. You'll also have to struggle a little bit to find the English option in the menu and turn it on. But thankfully, even if you don't want to set the menus to English, getting to the FreeSync option is really easy because the FreeSync option is in English. And so if you want to set FreeSync, here's all you got to do. Just go to this menu item, select this, hit the menu button on the FreeSync option, toggle it with the arrow, the monitor will sort of disconnect and reconnect, and then you'll get the pop-up, FreeSync is enabled or FreeSync is detected, and you're good to go. Now, if you're, if you've got an NVIDIA card, obviously FreeSync is not gonna work, but the testing that we're doing here is on a Fury, not an X, and so for Doom, for example, we're using Vulkan. Um, we started out with everything on high, but we switched everything to ultra, so we'd have a little bit more variability in frame rate. The FreeSync FPS for this monitor is 48 to 144 hertz. So as long as your game stays above 48 FPS at 1080p, the monitor will be able to respond immediately. Now playing a couple of different games, doing the FreeSync testing, I didn't detect any tearing. Sometimes FreeSync can be a little bit of a mixed bag, especially if you're hovering around you know, your FreeSync range. But because the FreeSync range on this monitor is so wide between 48 and 144 hertz uh, and it's 1080p, I had trouble getting to those edge cases. Now we've got our two displays set up side by side, both of them outputting the same uh, the same signal. It's just, they're, they're both set for 1080p. The Samsung is configured for game mode, um, which improves the response time, which we're gonna take a look at in a minute. But already you can see <laughs> that the, you know, the Samsung is much darker and it's actually to do with the angle that the camera is at because they, they, the camera is a little bit low. If I were to raise the camera about six inches, this would get much lighter and that's because TN viewing angle really isn't that great. The viewing angle on this curved monitor is much more consistent um, than TN and that's just the difference between TN and PVA. Nobody, I think, is gonna argue with that. Even modern process TN, it's uh, improved over this, I think, is much better. But note the date on this Tom's Hardware review. It's, you know, a little, well, at the time of this video, it's a little more than a year out. This monitor I've had for 18 months, maybe almost two years, something like that. And the initial review that I did of it was pretty scathing because of the inconsistencies in the color, the poor viewing angle, and the poor response time. Let's take a look at the response time. So this panel, the Samsung panel, advertises itself as one millisecond gray to gray. The panel manufacturer for the micro board, the PVA panel, advertises it as a six millisecond response time, which is not a gray to gray time. This test is putting sort of a light gray on a dark gray. That's what the little thing is that's moving. And with your eyeball or the camera shutter, um, you can sort of see when you set the shutter speed to a certain speed on the camera, you can take a still picture and the shutter will fire, you know, in one one hundredth of a second, one four hundredth of a second, whatever. And you can take a bunch of pictures like that and then look at what's in the pictures and determine how truthful or not um, the various specs are. But you don't even need the camera. You can just eyeball it and see, look how slow the Samsung panel is. And this is not necessarily exactly the same gray to gray test because the gray, the grays that we're talking about for the Samsung may be a little lighter and a little darker, but it should be, you know, if we're talking about one millisecond in the best case scenario, in the worst case scenario, it shouldn't be the really insane result that we're seeing here where you've, you've got sort of a black trail behind it. And the reason you've got a black trail behind it is because the circuit in the Samsung is trying to compensate because it knows what the next frame is because it's running a frame behind. It's sort of looking ahead by slowing everything down a couple of frames uh, in order to be able to try to compensate for that on the TN panel. You don't have that on this particular PVA panel. And that's why I say some, some TN panels are better than others. So not all TN panels are created equal you have to actually run the test. The specifications are actually meaningless. You have to do and witness these kinds of tests when you're looking at a monitor review in general, 
in order to make heads or tails of if the panel is reasonable. Because if you look at this monitor on paper, 32 inches, 1080p, it doesn't make any sense. And then when you dive into it, it's like, oh, 144 hertz, 32 inches. The response time is actually pretty reasonable uh, in terms of being around 144 hertz. It's like, oh, oh, that's interesting. Another test that we do, and here's some still images from that test, uh, is looking for adjacent blocks that are colored with a really fast shutter speed on the camera. This is one that is really hard to capture with the camera that I have in video, but I can show you the still frames where we're messing around with shutter speed of one two hundredth of a second, one four hundredth of a second. And you can see that, you know, going from black to gray to black, you know, that this panel is maybe a little bit slower than its advertised speed of six milliseconds, but it's not significantly slower than, you know, 16 milliseconds which is what it would be if it was 60 hertz, if the panel itself were 60 hertz. Uh, so this actually is a good result. This is a reasonable result for this monitor. And the monitor really is responding to 144 hertz. The important thing here is that we can see that no frames are being dropped at 144 hertz because there are some monitors that will say, yes, we can handle 144 hertz. The input board can handle 144 hertz, but the panel, the, the physical panel cannot handle 144 hertz, so the physical panel will have dropped frames and that sort of thing. That would be visible in this type of test where we're looking for adjacent frames because if a frame had been dropped, you will see a gray square, a black square, and another gray square where the panel had skipped over uh, that particular frame because the panel could not keep up with the board. We don't see that in the case of the micro board. Now the Samsung tops out at 60 hertz, TN panel, one millisecond. But, so that test is not super useful on the Samsung, but we can look at motion blur and motion trails on the Samsung and confirm that this panel is much, much slower in real world scenarios than its actual advertised speed. At least for gaming and the type of things that the audience would be interested in. Like playing a game on this Samsung is not a pleasant experience by any stretch of the imagination. Playing Doom with Vulcan at 100 FPS on this thing at 1080p yeah, the pixels are the size of bricks, but that was actually a really pleasant gaming experience. It's it's really neat. It's really this is what all goes into figuring out a monitor for real. Yeah, it's it's lab coat time. It's a little bit nerdy, but you know, hopefully you guys have a little bit better understanding of the types of things that go into this. Incidentally, the pixel layout on this is BGR. We did the testing, and the pixel layout on the micro board is BGR, meaning that it's blue, green, red in terms of the subpixel arrangement. Uh, and the only other weird thing that I encountered is. Even though this micro board has speaker holes at the back, I don't think it actually has speakers. So I've got, you know, audio through HDMI and audio through DisplayPort, but I couldn't actually get the monitor to produce any sound or there were no volume controls. So I think even though the monitor's got the holes for speakers, I don't think the speakers are actually there. So just, you know, keep that in mind. If you were it's like, oh man, I really wish it had speakers. I don't think it's got speakers. At least I can figure out how to turn them on if, the, if it does. Your mileage may vary. What's the matter? Things moving too fast for you? Let me slow it down. <laughs> it's ready. How fast are the monitors in relation to one another? And so what you do is you set the shutter speed on the camera to be really fast, and then you take still pictures, and then you look at the difference between the two numbers. Now, it doesn't tell you anything about the absolute latency between the time you click and the time you see action on the screen. But what it does tell you is the difference between, you know, this monitor and that monitor in terms of reacting, because they're both displaying the same signal at the same refresh rate. Running this test, we can see that the Samsung consistently is two to three frames behind the micro board. And that makes sense from our scrolling testing. We were doing the scrolling testing earlier and you could just eyeball it, you know, just scroll. And if you're watching sort of both monitors out of the corners of your eyes, it's like, wow, the Samsung's sort of behind the other one. And so I, you know, I was like, man, oh, that's a frame or two. That's two to three, two to three frames behind the micro board. But this is a TN panel with a one millisecond response time. You look at the specs, you look at that Tom's hardware review of this Samsung monitor and it seems completely reasonable. It's not, it's not, it's this monitor. I, this monitor is just not very good. The same, and you would not think that a Samsung monitor would actually be awful, but I'm just, ugh. but the micro board monitor, I mean, it's got its faults too, but at least it's, you know, basically what it advertises that it is. And you can see that between the two of them, the micro board monitor is two or three frames faster than the Samsung, meaning that the, the monitor is not delaying the signal two to three frames. And knowing what I know of TN panels, it makes sense that the Samsung would have to de delay the signal two or three frames because in order for TN to do its work, uh, the monitor has to look at 
you know, the next two or three frames in the sequence in order to be able to send the signal right now to the panel because of how the pixels actually respond. This pan, so they're like, oh, it's one millisecond gray to gray. It's like, uh, uh, maybe. But this monitor, you know, is just advertised with a response time of about six milliseconds, which, you know, is roughly 160 frames per second, something like that, or 160 changes per second. So they've implemented it as 144 hertz, 1080p, 32 inches. I would like to see a 24 inch version of this monitor, a 1080p, with all of the same performance characteristics. I think it might be in order for me to get you know, a 24 inch TN panel that would be a little less expensive, I think, than the micro board monitor and see how that monitor performs. But in terms of performance, 144 hertz, 1080p, this actually does what it says it does. So if you're into that, if you're looking for that, there's that. If you do something other than game with your monitor, I think this in terms of color accuracy and color reproduction and that sort of thing is gonna be better than a TN panel, maybe even better than a TN panel with a modern process. But you know, this monitor is only, you know, a year or two old, the model. I would not have expected the TN panel in a monitor this recent to be this terrible. The blacks are black. I mean, you can just, you can set a black screen on both monitors and you can see how not black this TN panel is versus the blacks over here. The contrast on the Samsung might be better in some scenarios, but because of the viewing angle problems, I don't think that that really works out in the real world, but that's just my own personal opinion. So that's been a comparison. Hopefully I haven't started any holy wars, uh, and that's the nerdy part of the video. So let's do the conclusion on the micro board next. So this has been a little bit of insight into my rationale in putting things together and how we do comparisons to things like that. Hopefully it really was 70%, you know, information, 30% monitor review, but I'd like to put together a checklist. I'd like to put together the level one checklist of how to take a look at monitors and uh, how to review monitors and how to put monitors through all the proper testing. Things like the advertised frame rate of the monitor, um, how the monitor actually does in testing, doing this type of latency testing, doing this time, this type of frame timing. If you know people have a CRT that they can compare against, that might be a good thing to do. Especially some of the, like the M900, like the, the modern CRTs, comparing those to a modern LCD panel um, like this would probably be a really, really interesting thing to do. Got to get a Leo Bodnar um, latency measuring thing. That would be another option. Uh, color calibration. Maybe those are things for the Patreon. I'm not really sure. Uh, but we can start a conversation around it in the forum. And so I would love to see you there. And I would love to see people that have experience doing this kind of thing uh, weigh in their, their two cents. But I think that the level one community, I think that we can put together a checklist, like an official actual checklist of the type of testing that anybody should do. So the next Tom's Hardware or the next whoever is reviewing a monitor can actually just put it together and not just say, oh, this is a really solid monitor and it's, you know, Samsung and whatever, because I do not agree with the review on Tom's Hardware and I would not expect that. But, you know, we'll see. It'll be interesting. The future looks interesting, I think. And, uh, you know, production, I'm still working on the production stuff, obviously, but we're getting there, incremental improvements. So, could be worse. Could definitely be worse. So if you like this video, please do like it and share it and do that kind of stuff because that really helps us out. Sort of spread the word. Gotta, gotta get the subscriptions up and that sort of thing. Uh, this video was made possible by support from Patreon. Patreons did not pay for the monitor, obviously. But uh, in terms of production support and editing and that sort of thing, patrons paid for all that. So thank you to the patrons. If you'd like to sign up for Patreon, the information is below. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out. And I'll see you in the forums.